Today's video is sponsored by Rhodes Vans. More on them later in the video. We're Lottie and Margaret, and we are finally back to building our van. In February, we hit a series of distractions. We were so close to finishing our custom water tanks when suddenly we had the opportunity to renovate our workshop and even do an e-bike product launch. Now the workshop is the perfect van build location. And now that the weather is finally improving, we are tackling the creation of our dream tiny home on wheels. This van is going to be completely over the top, over engineered and awesome. We'll have a built-in 3D printer, two massive skylights, a hundred kilowatt of solar power on a lift, a bed lift, charging docks in our new garage for our two powerful e-bikes, two showers, a 13 kilowatt DIY battery, plenty of milli customizations, and so, so, so much more. We're tracking every tiny expense for this van, and you can see that linked in the description. For the whole project, our goal budget was 20,000 USD. We spent 13,200 on the van itself, giving us 6,800 for the conversion. We designed both our gray water tank and fresh water tank, but when we sent to have them made for us, the result was the wrong shape, the wrong location of the pipe holes, the sensor holes, and even the amount of water that we wanted. We had waited months and months to receive this fail of a tank, so we decided to take matters into our own hands and weld them ourselves. This week, we're diving head first back into this project by replacing the wheels on our van and also mounting our two custom-made DIY water tanks. Ready, Millie? Give me, give me, give me. Me? <laughs> give me some nice looks. Wow. That oh, white? Oh, that looks nice. Holy cows. Holy cows. <laughs> I'm testing my week's invention. This is the AliExpress item combined with the Milwaukee 12 volt battery adapter. It's a 12 volt light, so this is a 12 volt battery, and I can be using these units for a really cool flat panel. And that brings me to this. Combined with all condition tires, Matador 225. 60 18 inch it feels so good to be in here and Lottie and I are like standing around just getting hyped about these new wheels we got shout out to William from Rhodes Vans in the UK for hooking us up we will tell you more about these wheels and these new tires that we have just want to get them on the van and start moving with the van but we're just in here re-admiring everything <laughs> getting like re-stoked because look at our roof windows hey people look at the feedback from the windows from the winter time winter time snow no problem i'm checking for leaks nothing's around mm -hmm. So questions some of you might be asking, how much weight do we carry extra with these new wheels? So this spare tire is 31 kilos. And let's see what the new wheels are. Oh yeah, it's lighter. <laughs> One kilo, so that's four kilos less. <laughs> <laughs> that's four kilos less. I expect it'll be more heavy actually. Wow, that's a nice surprise. I'll pass my check man his beer. Quickly. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most check thing I've ever seen. <laughs> ah, just in case you didn't know, because I didn't know, 
on our original wheels for Fiat they have these center points to make sure the wheel is always perfectly centered so then universal aluminum wheels have a little bit bigger holes so they can reduce them using these plastic uh, reductions to any vehicle essentially I had no idea this is a thing <laughs> so I was like what doesn't fit what lame <laughs> tapping in don't take that as an example just check village boy <laughs> <laughs> this is the detail that's important. Because that's what pros do. for the aesthetics of this van was like a stealthy tech look. And we are completely over the moon with these 18 inch black Rhino wheels from Rhodes Vans. I mean, I knew they'd look good, but I didn't think they'd look this good. A portion of sales of these black Rhino wheels actually goes towards protecting rhinos in Africa. Many of you know, I worked and lived there for a year and a half and these creatures are unbelievable. So every effort to go towards helping them along the way is near and dear to us. We've never had alloys on our vans before and it's absolute blessing. I love the stiffness. I like the low profile of tires, makes it a little bit stiffer, still fine for off-road riding. These are actually like a kilo lighter than the original rims that came with Ducato. I was completely blown away. And they're also heavy duty for four wheel drives and for all our needs as, as a van lifers. Rhodes Vans offers accessories for all sorts of vans and build outs. You can shop by brand or by product and they offer everything from seats to insulation to rear door carriers. I could go on and on and on. For the next three months, Rhodes Vans is offering everybody who watches this video a discount using the code LMYT and that will get you 10% off. Make sure to check out Rhodes Vans uh, website in the description of this video. Same, we're linking the wheels in a parts list and the description too. Now it's time to mount those bloody tanks. As we're starting on this tank again, it's kind of wild to think that the last time we worked on this tank, we had a ceiling that was like dripping down on us. It was all dusty. Everything was falling apart on the walls. It was really dark inside. It was freezing inside. And now we're starting this project with a whole new slate with everything so much easier to work with and work around. to remind you bits and pieces that we have the sensor we have the heating element and we have the release valve right here then we have look welded lo the lowest point so we can be sucking the last little bit of water in there then we have this just as an attachment for the hose so it stays actually there it doesn't go over bump and ends up being there so we know this is gonna stay there even after we weld it then look at the lid this is the top side of the lid and we have, this is air intake, so we have it at the highest point, that means I countersink all of this. This is just the intake water and this is intake for the water pump. So I have these uh, stainless steel clamps, I'm gonna attach them to it. And um, this is for the lower, uh, for the level sensor, for the water level sensor. And I only welded this extra square to have thicker material so I can screw to it and I don't have any screws coming from uh, from the inside of the tank. That was a good recap, honey. That was a recap, everybody is on the same wave <laughs> and we can keep rolling.
I found myself these two pieces of wood and I'm gonna plane them for the thickness of the insulation because mounting these things would be easy but because I'm gonna have them insulated I can't be hanging them on the insulation itself so I need to position them in roughly thirds and then this is exactly where the support of the tank is going to be. little bit of an update so took on this project without recording it but basically I was digging up old plywood we discarded all of that this is going to be loaded into a separate dumpster hopefully tonight or tomorrow um, for waste because this is silicon this is all of these were used as um, concrete molds to make the slabs like this hopefully this whole space will open up in the next few days I ain't gonna tell no Progress. Look at all this. The whole space is clearing out. Woo! It's a body. Not even the rain is stopping her. <laughs> This is all loaded up to the brim and look at that progress. Wow, what a nice extension. If all of this is clear, these will be moved container there. This will all be moved open. Wow, that's huge. Now let's check on Lottie Bunny. Even though it's not perfectly straight, it's a plastic. So I'm gonna mammoth glue it. That's gonna compensate all the curves and it's gonna create support right in the middle of these two dividers. And then it's gonna be extra support here. This wooden frame goes around. Bang, it's gonna be glued, supported, so the tank goes hard against the wood, hard against the wood. That's gonna chew some of the shakes because it's a softer material. And now we're gonna impregnate it, dry it on the sun, and then glue it straight to it. <laughs> Kitten. Oh, I'd love to be with you. What? Okay. Had a few people ask me why Lottie and I call each other honey or bunny or honey bunny. And a fun little couple fact is it stems from the most romantic scene in Hollywood cinematic history. I'm ready, let's do it right now, right here. Come on. All right. Same as last time, remember? <coughs> Your crowd control. I handle employees. Mm -hmm. I love you, pumpkin. I love you, honey bunny. Everybody be cool, this is a robbery! We ran out of black mammoth, so... Don't tell anybody. Normally all the wood supports would be hidden behind the plastic sheet that's going to be covering the insulation. But because we'll be testing it, if we have any leaks and it will definitely get splashed, 
that's why we are painting the wood right away too. And why not? It at least looks cool. <laughs> you know what is funny? That sometimes I appreciate taking a break from a project. That gives me more options to think it through better, find a better solutions, and always a little bit further I push it, better the solution is. But in this case, with the van and how to mount the water tanks, when I stopped a few months ago and moved to a renovation project, now I'm back on it and the solution is exactly the same I was about to do a few months ago. So there is no time to wait, let's just go straight to it. These are covers when we received the garage doors. This was all the covering material and I didn't feel uh, like throwing it away, I didn't have a heart to throw it away. So I kept it and now it will be really nice to go under the van and mount the tanks. I don't need to be cutting anything mechanical on a car because I'm creating a three centimeter blocks here on all the sides support, supporting essentially everywhere to compensate all of this so the handbrake can be moving back and forth. I'll be able to unscrew the water tank from four points, four bolts and take it down anytime independently. It's serviceable, it's replaceable and if I need to do any mechanical work with a handbrake I always have pretty easy access. This is where it ends, the water tank and I'll be creating most probably a kind of a cross uh, X shape supports that I'm gonna attach to the chassis and that will have a welded uh, thread rod from it. More and more I work on this, more I realize how overkill this is and how, how this is complicated. Hey, but I just finished renovating my workshop. I'm happy I can be welding. Let me do my overkill solutions. I'm having a great time. <laughs> This is essentially the whole structural part of the car together with the support connecting them together through the good wood. This I thought will turn out hopefully a little bit more elegant, but hey, it at least does the job. And just in case you wonder, 1.1 kilos. I saw some of the frame structural parts people do on their mounting systems and some of them are definitely heavier than this. That's essentially 3.2 kilos for the mounting system, excluding the support which will be meter long. I could easily use a flat uh, type of a metal, flat shape, but in the middle, like look at his length, in the middle that would be most probably vibrating and it would go like this, so it wouldn't have any support in the middle, only where the thread rod is. So this is why I decided to go for this U shape, because it's going to have a more support in the middle. So what I did, I cut it on an angle, I hammered it flat, and welded one extra two millimeter piece of metal to make this a little bit stronger. The whole time I was feeling I'm over killing it with prevention and this welding and but hey I enjoy the process so much and now it does look nice. It looks legit. It looks like a proper product like when it's all painted you know not DIY. No one in put with you. Life of Kushka. Did 
curious purr. <laughs> that really does sit nicely and the angle is nice too so I can just mark it pre-drill holes I tested moving these to get, get more space but immediately the wheels were squeaking and so the design is still fine because it's still 150 liters what we aimed for and also look it beautifully avoids the structural parts of the vehicle so like I'm not touching anything existing You can seriously barely see this from the bottom, but it still has further to go up. Pushing this top will go all the way to the, the top there. Look at that. Wow. Can't even see it. And it's, and it's lifted. You know, the wheel is lifted and you can barely see it. When that's all the way down, not a chance. Mm. Such a cool tool. Got Loctite here. And it goes into the rivet. So these are bolts. And then these are rivets. I always feel like we're um, kind of pushing the limits because it is um, upload day. I don't know if you can see this. So we're uploading the video in the next like two hours and uh, we're about to be mounting this. So we cut it very close here, here at the workshop. <laughs> we just want everything we can possibly fit into these videos, these project videos confined to a video because it gets confusing if it's uh, spread over too much and we've already spread this tank through enough. We're going to be mounting these tanks without insulation for a while. We want to see if there are any leaks and if we insulate everything around it will be really hard to detect even the smallest drop. And that's actually been, uh, was an unpredicted benefit of this whole van build kind of stalling is we properly were able to test out those roof windows um, to see if there were any leaks in the last like three months or so. Uh, and that was us driving around, no padding, no ceiling on, just these windows. And so if there was a problem, we'd be able to address it quickly or fix it quickly without having it damage the ceiling. So that's been a big benefit. And we want to try that same technique out with these tanks, see if there are any problems when we fill them up and drive around with them. And if there is, we can address it right away and then insulate and do the final mounting. Can you see our water tank? Gray water tank installed. 100 liters. Fresh water tank installed. 150 liters. And you cannot 
even see. Laddie's gonna put it down now. We're gonna see uh, how close it is. Oh my gosh. Where'd it go? <laughs> <What's the thing? laughs> I want to see the silver knots. Yeah. It needs to be touched. It needs to be painted. Black paint. Wow. Wow, the gray water and the Gloria are that in this. You can't see it at all. Wow, you honestly can't see it at all. Honey. Crack. It's pretty good. <laughs> I can't wait to fill them with water and test them out. Now we're gonna be maybe driving with them a week or two weeks, see if, if there are any leaks. But it's now easy to dismount them. I'll probably do a few things different. Like that U-shape was maybe overkill, maybe flat strip of metal would be just fine. And I'm pretty happy. Now I just need to waterproof those valves because they are not IP64 proofed. So I need to wrap them somehow and make them a little bit waterproof. But overall, I'm happy that I <laughs> won't be pulling uh, metal chips from my underwear anymore <laughs> when drilling the holes underneath from uh, for rivets. You did so good, honey. I Nailed thought, it. Let's go camping. Let's go camping. We're so happy to be back on the van. It feels right, doesn't it? Finally, yeah. I'm happy I can be just welding. Some simple jobs. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out and pushes us forward on projects like these. And uh, we're going to keep working and hope to see you next week. Keep an eye on the following projects. <laughs> this has a long way to go.